In 1884, William Thompson, better known as Lord Kelvin, was looking up at the sky. Specifically, he was measuring the mass of the Milky Way. He did this in two ways. The first was by observing the speed of stars going around the galaxy. The greater the mass, the greater the force on the stars, and the faster the stars would be moving. The other way was by looking at all the stars that he could see and multiplying by the estimated mass of each star, which is a reasonable calculation. What he found was that the mass due to the movement of the stars was significantly greater, or, or the mass calculation for the movement of the stars was significantly greater than the mass of all the stars he could see, leading him to conclude that there are a whole bunch of stars out there that are just dark. Now, his calculations in 1884 were a bit sketchy. We know as dark stars are bogus, but he was on the right track. Further experimental evidence, uh, a lot of it in the 1970s, including galaxy rotation curves, gravitational lensing, more on these two later, velocity dispersions, and cosmic microwave background lead, leads us to be sure that there is some mass out there that is just uh, unaccounted for. Now today, we don't uh, constrain ourselves to thinking that this unaccounted mass is in the form of stars. Rather, we think it's most likely a whole bunch of really tiny subatomic particles. Now Kasha is going to get us up to speed on the cutting edge of dark matter. Now you may be wondering, how are we so sure dark matter exists if we can't see it? And that's a great question. And the answer is observations and evidence. Astronomers and astrophysicists have noticed some pretty spooky things about our universe that don't just quite add up. Some of these observations come from the work of Vera Rubin. Vera Rubin was an astronomer who studied galaxy rotation curves. Her work uncovered the so-called galaxy rotation problem. If a galaxy's mass was entirely made up of visible matter, Stars in that galaxy would rotate about the galaxy center faster the closer they are to that center. But this is not what Vera Rubin observed. Here, you can see an actually observed galaxy rotation curve versus our predictions. You may notice that the farther you go out from the galaxy center, the faster these stars are actually rotating. This suggests that there's some type of matter that we can't see on the outskirts of these galaxies, which we've dubbed the dark matter halo. Another form of observational evidence comes from a pretty cool effect predicted by Einstein's general theory of relativity. General relativity helps explain how gravity actually works and treats spacetime as something that can be bent and distorted by the presence of mass. The more the mass, the stronger the curve. Here's a representation of the Earth bending the spacetime around it. What's also pretty cool is that objects traveling through the universe will follow this curved path. One example of this is light. Light traveling from distant galaxies often pass massive galaxy clusters as they travel through the universe. These massive galaxy clusters bend space-time around it, and light rays will follow this curved path, leading to distorted images at Earth. Here's an actual image of this effect, known as gravitational lensing. Measurements of gravitational lensing by astronomers has allowed astronomers to predict the existence and abundance of dark matter, which they believe outnumbers normal matter 5 to 1. Although we aren't sure what exactly makes up dark matter, physicists have tons of ideas backed up by research. These ideas are pretty vast and range from the very small, such as the axion, to the very large, such as primordial black holes. These masses span over 70 orders of magnitude, making it impossible for just one experiment to look for all these possible candidates. One of these candidates is something known as a WIMP, or a weakly interacting massive particle. These particles are known as weakly interacting because they wouldn't interact very much with light or other particles, and they are known as massive because they have more mass than a proton. These particles are pretty popular because they're predicted by a number of different theories, and maybe even more importantly, because of something known as the WIMP miracle. Based on particle physics theories, the expected abundance of WIMPs matches pretty closely to what we expect for dark matter, that 5 to 1 ratio, which is pretty spooky if you ask me. Another dark matter candidate is something known as the axion. The axion is a theoretical particle that could help explain how quarks stick together and form neutrons. The axion, if it were to exist, would also have some pretty neat properties that make them prime dark matter candidates. They are very light and weakly interacting with light and normal matter. One special thing about the axion is that it can convert into a photon in the presence of a magnetic field, and the reverse effect is also possible, making them detectable here on Earth. Physicists all over the world are working hard to solve this dark matter mystery. Some of that research is even happening here at the University of Florida. UF is a member of the ADMX Collaboration, which searches for axions in our galaxy's dark matter halo, and a member of the ALPS Collaboration, which hopes to generate and detect axions in a laboratory setting. UF's own Pierre Sakivi recently won the American Physical Society's J.J. Sakurai Award for Theoretical Particle Physics for his work on axions. I highly encourage you to check the links below to learn more about the amazing research happening here at the University of Florida. Happy Halloween!
Halloween. Happy Dark Matter Day. And, and go, go Gators! Gators!